Number one, the first factor that is responsible for the believer enjoying ever increasing results is called the state of your heart. Please write it down. The state of your heart. It is amazing that most believers do not pay attention to the states of their heart, your motif, in other words. We keep pressing for all kinds of miracles and supernatural manifestations from God and we have not learned the factors that God looks for. Hallelujah. When you're being trained to go, say, to an embassy, maybe for a visa, say, a U.S. embassy or any other embassy that would probe you and ask you questions, usually if you have the opportunity to have someone train you, they will train you to learn the things that the people are looking for. Is that true? There are certain things they need to know. Maybe your financials, maybe your family ties. They want to know certain things and those things will become the determining factor they may not particularly have any bias. They don't even know you. But they, are, they have been trained to identify certain factors. Am I right on that? And if they are convinced based on your answer that those factors are there, they may stamp your visa. And if they are not convinced, it's possible that you may lose an opportunity to have your visa stamped. I'm just giving that example. So it's possible to find someone sharp, responsible looking gentleman and he will go out of that embassy and walk out without a visa. And you will see an unassuming person who looks confused but has tried to understand whether by luck or by understanding that this is what they may most likely be asking. And he will come out rejoicing, I have my visa stamped. When you come to God to receive, as much as God is compassionate, as much as God is merciful, God is also principled. I want you to know that he has chosen to submit himself to his word. So God is moved, listen, he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity. But what moves him is his word. He has chosen to honor his word. And that is the reason why you cannot whip up sentiments and believe that God will uniquely just exempt you in defiance to his principles. When you know this about God, you will respect the fact that he's a loving God, he's a merciful God, but that there are certain things that heaven wants to see as far as the believer's work is concerned. That is the reason why three or four people can come before the Lord desiring to receive. The Bible tells us about the prayer of two people in the Bible. That one person came to pray and another person came to pray. Both of them came to pray before the Lord. And one person stood in pride and self-sufficiency. I am this. I give arms. I don't do this. And another person came as a sinner. Opening his heart to say, Lord, I'm not even deserving of your mercy. Jesus was giving this as a parable. And he said, which of the two do you think will be answered? So the same God is rich unto all. The same Lord is rich unto all. But not many people or not everybody will receive as they desire from God. And I'm telling you that one of the major controlling factors as far as receiving from God and generally doing business with God is concerned is the state of your heart. Write that down, please. The state of your heart. Psalm 119, we'll see verse 2 and then verse 10. Psalm 119, it says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Watch this. That seek him with the whole heart. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Go to verse 10. It says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments with my whole heart. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. One whose motive has been purified. He said, For they shall see God. They shall see God rise for them. They shall see God come through for them. They shall see God change their stories. I like the way the Bible says it. It just says, for they shall see God. There is no limit to what you can see him do when your heart is pure. They shall see God. To some, they will see God lift them. To some, they will see God bring down their enemies. For some, they will see God open doors. To some, they will see God change their story. But by all means, 
He says, blessed are those who are pure in heart. You know what it means to be pure in heart? It doesn't just mean to be sincere in your desire. That your motive has been so purified that behind the things that you seek God for is the singular desire, of course, to improve your life, but truly that you desire everything God gives you for the purpose of revealing him to the nations as you rise also. That behind the prosperity, behind the lifting, Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you, even before I begin to pray, you will find out that certain sicknesses are just dropping. It is true. In my walk with God, the greatest determinant, as far as the manifestation of God's hand is concerned in the life of a man, is the state of your heart. You have heard me say it a thousand times. You can fast all you can, pray all you can, read the Bible cover to cover all you can, attend church all you can as important as those things are if they do not translate to first of all purifying your motive so you can come to god and say father in this miracle service this grace called favor let me tell you how the grace of god works when it comes and finds a corrupted motive it will not rest rather the holy spirit will translate himself to a refiner's fire and walk on your heart first before that grace rests because it will be a waste you will not receive anything so a man of god is praying and say father let grace come upon me give my ministry visibility across the nations and that grace that lifts men as it comes it finds a heart that is corrupt i hope you know that your heart too is a prayer warrior it's not just your lips. Your lips can be saying, Lord, be blessed. And your heart says, Lord, give me this and let me show people that I'm not a small person. There are a list of people in my heart that I need to prove a point to. <laughs> Is someone learning? I have found that for years, I studied why people would pray and fast and do everything right. And yet it will look like the God of heaven. I know that he's not a wicked God. So what is restraining your hand, oh God, from reaching them? And the diagnosis number one is that the state of your heart needs purging, needs correction, needs adjustment, needs purification. So for many of us, before he comes as a miracle worker, allow him come as a refiner's fire. Hmm. Father, what is there? You can give me 100 million. You can give me 1 billion. You can bring me out of this financial calamity. What is there to heal this cancer or to heal this diabetes? What is there to turn the, this, this plague of witchcraft in my life? And God says, my hand is not too short. But every time I come, I see that in your pursuit, God is not a factor. You are just using religion or church or spirituality to fuel your lust. And God says, that is not how I walk. Is someone learning? In teaching people how to receive from God, if the only thing you teach them are the dynamics of spiritual activities without probing into their heart, you can give them the rod, even if you are Elisha, they will take that rod and lay it on a dead body. Correct rod, correct instruction. It will not come back to life because the state of your heart is the battery that powers everything. You can give someone a brand new clock and it does not work. The battery that powers it is the state of your heart. Every time I prepare for the miracle service or any other service, I tell you, among the many things I ask God to do is, Father, purify my heart. Let it never be that my standing here is a man's ambition just to build an empire. No, the agenda is beyond showing that a man of God is powerful. The agenda is beyond showing that there is a great global ministry. My concern, my desperation, my pursuit, my desire is to see, number one, that Jesus is revealed and that in him being revealed, let his outstretched arm rest upon his people, terminating all kinds of yokes in their lives. John said that I may decrease so that he will increase. Is someone learning now? So that you don't recycle your prayer request again and wonder why I wrote that request in July. I wrote it in August. 
in September. Lord, why is my prayer request not being answered? Perhaps God is saying, it does not take me any time to visit you, but let's work on your heart. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer the sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. Psalm 21 to 4. I hope someone is receiving already. Yeah. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. It says, the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. We are reading to 4 verse 2. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Verse 3. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. I like how KJV puts verse 4. It says, grant thee according to thine own heart. Stop there. Other versions will say, oh, grant you your heart desire. But I like the way KJV puts it. It says, grant thee, not just according to his power, according to the state of your heart. Grant thee, not just according to his power, according to your heart. Grant thee your request. Grant thee the anointing. Grant thee the favor. Grant thee the healing. Grant thee all of this according to your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, is one of the grandest formula in the life of this man you see. I am very unapologetic with pouring out my heart before the Lord. Especially when I'm coming to stand. Lord, if, if by any means the desire to build an empire, maybe I did not know and it just crept into my heart. Let the circumcision start with me first. You don't just stand and say, be healed and watch people heal. God is not a herbalist. Hello? Are we together now? You want to stand and make declarations and the gates of people's destiny be open? It takes more than prayer and fasting. You believe me on that. It takes more than just Bible study. All those activities only find their place when the heart is truly purified. And what does it mean for your heart to be purified? To see Jesus glorified. That beyond building an empire, beyond wanting to make a name, I rather people forget Joshua Selman and remember Jesus. I rather people forget Koinonia and remember Jesus. If you forget about the name of the preacher who God used to bring you healing and you remember the God who healed you, it's an intelligent bargain. If you forget the name of the ministry that God used to turn your life around, but you remember the one who healed you. But if you remember Joshua Selman, if you remember Koinonia, if you remember the manifestations of power, if you remember the color of the cloth that I wore, and forget Jesus, and forget that it was by his mercy, at the end of it, you'd only practice idolatry. If you're a man of God here and you came for this miracle service, I want you to listen to me very well. I can tell you with all due respect and by the privilege of God's mercies. I don't know everything about God. I'm a student still learning. But I can tell you, I understand something about the presence and the power of God. And that in the economy of the anointing, the state of a man's heart vetoes every other thing. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? Yeah. Listen, when I say these things, I desire Koinonia to grow higher. I desire myself as a man of God to keep rising higher. So when I say these things, some of you feel, ah, it's a risk. Are you not bringing yourself down? But that's how we got here. 
the more we reduce the more you knew about us it's a mystery that the more you decrease you will not disappear you are still needed but the more you decrease mysteriously as you lift him people also see you but when the agenda is about lifting yourself and promoting yourself they will forget you because god is too serious to allow his name to fall to the ground because of the ambition of a man who does not respect and regard him is someone learning already man of god that may be the reason you may be a man of integrity, I agree. You may be a man of character, I agree. You may even be a man who is sincerely loving God, I agree. But perhaps the missing link can be that you are hoping to use ministry as a ladder to gain popularity and fame, followership and loyalty. That is not the assignment of ministry. John 1, 6, there was a man sent from God his name was John 7 the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe believe in who the light you would also believe in the light bearer but start by believing in the light are we together is someone learning so for some of you before he comes as a miracle worker He's coming as a refiner's fire. Ah. Purifying your heart. Teaching you that when God comes to you to lift you, he wants to see how that lifting would translate to revealing his glory and how it would translate to being a blessing to many. It's all about you, Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God. And I surrender. It's all about you. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God. I'll sing it one more time. Let it enter your spirit. That it's all about you. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God. And I surrender. Oh, you alone are God. And I surrender. My greatest relevance is standing behind the cross and pushing Jesus, promoting him, let people see him. It is not only the greatest position, it is the safest position. Because any attack that comes to you will pass through the cross before it reaches you. But when you stand in front of the cross, you become a victim of your own pride. Mm, you are safe when you stand behind the cross. Let Jesus be seen before you are seen. Let Jesus be revealed before you are revealed. Whatever arsenal comes, it will meet with the cross first. Whatever will meet you will have to defeat the cross. I am comfortable standing behind the cross. It's all about you. Hear me preacher. Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God. 
and I surrender. Oh, you are Lord, I die, and I surrender. He comes to me with a very simple bargain. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Father, give me the grace. If that is it, let men, even if it means them forgetting about me, no problem. But may they always remember you when they see me. May they always remember your power when they see me. May they always remember your wisdom. I am satisfied being a mirror. No mirror reflects its own image. No. The mirror stands clear and whatever object stands before it, it reflects it. So when people look at you as the mirror and it is you they are seeing, you are reflecting something else. Is someone learning? Yeah. Make up your mind and say, Lord, bring me out of this witchcraft plague in my family and watch a mirror that will reflect you to the nations. And the Lord says, what did you say? Where is the power that has tied you for 80 years? Tied your family for 80 years. Here is a vessel that is determined to see my power and my glory that I want to become a testimony that God lifts. Lord, I'm not just looking for healing. I'm not just looking for longevity for the name. No, I want to be used as a specimen that every time the nations doubt whether there is a God, you will push me forward and I say, look at my life. I am a testament of what God can do with an ordinary man. Esther goes to the palace and she forgot the purpose for her rising. And Mordecai warned her, said there was a woman there before you. So if you mess up God's program the same way Vashti left, he will also take you away and keep overturning until he finds a vessel that can be a mirror. For some of you, God brought you here because you are literally at the red tape. It, don't let God take your bishopric because you are determined to be seen. You can still be gifted while forgotten. You can still be gifted, whereas in a strange way, as gifted as you are, nobody will remember you and nobody will place a demand upon your life. And yet God will find someone who may not be as gifted, but say, Lord, from the sea, I, I came from a village. I cannot even speak very well like Moses. And God says, a stammerer that will reveal me is greater than an orator who will let men see self. Someone, while you are seated, I'd like you to pray one minute. Father, purge my heart. I know that I came to be healed, but purge my heart. I came to be delivered, but purge my heart. Bring me to that point where my entire life becomes a, a project, a project to revealing you. Go ahead and pray. Overflows, pray. Online, pray. Jesus is speaking to someone. It's not because his power cannot be outstretched. 